Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to a new review. So this is an album that came out last year and I've been thinking, listening, and I was like, I really need to talk about this one. Um, so we're going to talk about Marina's last album, Ancient Dreams in a Modern Land. Now Marina, I have reviewed a few things. I think I reviewed Fruit and Part of Love and Fear. I'm going to get to that in a second. Um, she's one of my favorite artists. Really, I, I discovered her back in 2010 with her debut album, The Family Jewels, which is still fantastic to these days. And then in 20, in 2012, 10 years, I need to review it for this year, right? Um, she released the second album, Electro Hard, which changed everything. Um, one of my favorite albums of all time. I, <clears throat> if you don't like EDM, may not be for you, but if you love EDM, like, my god, this album is... Mm, chef's Kiss. Um, then Fruit came out, I believe, in 2016? 2015, actually. Uh, very solid album. And now we have Ancient Dreams in the Modern Land. So... If you follow the channel for a while, you might have noticed that a previous album, Love and Fear, I only reviewed the first part, uh, which was the love part, because I did not like this album that much in retrospect. Um, so actually, well, let me rephrase that. I think the love part of this album, because basically it was released in two parts first, it was a bit messy, honestly, if you look back. So there was the first part with love, and then the second part with fear. Um, like a bit of conceptual thing. So you, you ended up with 16 songs, which, honestly, as a Marina fan, I was like, oh my god, 16 songs? Oh, yes! Slay me, queen! Anyway, when this album happened, however, like, I give the, the love part Four stars out of five. I don't do ratings anymore. I've decided to stop, by the way. Because the thing is, it's not that bad. It's not bad. But it's not... It lacked that... The little oomph that Marina has in her music and her lyrics. This one was pretty much what you would hear all the time on the radio. I mean... I think our contribution to pop music isn't to dismiss in any way, even though she doesn't have a big fan base, she has a very loyal fan base. I mean, I've been here for 12 years and I, even with a disappointing album, I'm not living. <laughs> I'm still here because I was like, there's no in hell. She's gonna keep doing that. I, mean, I was like, if she kept making albums like Love and Fear, I was like, mm, maybe I would have been gone. Maybe I would have been like, you know what? It was... It was great to have you in my life, but now we are on separate paths. But that's not the case, thankfully, with Ancient Dreams in Modern Land. So I was... I believe the first single... Um, which one was it? Man's World. And I listened to it cautiously, because I still had the aftertaste of Love and Fear, and I was like, okay, it's not bad at all. I was like, okay, I'm, I'm actually into that. It's so like, all right, cautiously optimistic here. Then the album was announced, and um, we got like Purge the Poison, uh, Venus Flytrap as music videos and singles. And I was like, okay, I was like, I'm okay. That's three songs I'm into. I was like, oh, this is a good sign. And I was like, I was like. It's not much that I was happy that we got Marina back. I was like, okay, this is evolving. Like, that's what I love about her. She evolves. She evolves. Like, you never know what to expect with her music. Sometimes it can be disappointing, like love and fear. But sometimes it can be incredible. And Ancient Dreams and Moreland, it's so fun to listen to. At least the first half, I think, is very, like, it's really fast-paced, like, it keeps on going for like, I would say, the first four songs. You don't see time go by because it really is just catchy. Very catchy. Very Marina. As usual, her lyrics are very, um, they cut you very well. 
you know. She doesn't sugarcoat things, and、um, this is something that I think was missing from Love and Fear. Even though Love and Fear, you know, I appreciate it for the introspection and probably the self healing that it brought to her as a person. Very grateful for that, you know. Like I don't want to be like, oh, it's a bad album. End of story. No, there are good things about it. But as a fan, it really, eh, it really didn't cut to me. Especially the fear part. I just don't remember. If you ask me right now, a song from the second part of Love and Fear, I would not be able to tell you. Like I have to literally be on my iTunes library and look at it to be like, all、oh, right, it's it's a shame because. She was never an artist that I expected to be like. Oh, I don't remember this album because I remember every other album. And thankfully, Ancient Dreams in Motherland is、um, is the opposite. It's very memorable. I I think we can all agree that overall the fan base has been very happy with it. And not that there's anything wrong with loving love and fear. All right, I'm not. Now taking shots at anyone is if you discover Marina with Love and Fear and then got to know her music and the rest of her discography, then hey, perfect. I'm happy you do. Welcome to the cozy little family. We're happy to have new fans. I don't like to gatekeep things.、Um, it's it's good when artists gain new fans. They have a solid fan base. That's what you want. You know, you all want to get along.、Um, anyway. So yeah, Ancient Dreams in Motherland is so like I said, the first four songs like are very, very fast,、um, very energetic. I really like that. I would say maybe Man's World isn't as energetic as the rest, but the message kind of kind of feels the same way. And、uh, actually, I remember when Man's World came out and I listened to it, I was like, oh, this reminds me of Fruit. You know the fruit era was like this. Reminds me of like a maroon,、um, bit of happy, and I was like, I love fruit. This is one. This is a fantastic album. And I was like, I was like, but the thing is, I remember on Love and Fear,、um, and Made Heaven did the same. And I was, and then we got fooled by it because it was completely different. So I was again very cautiously optimistic. I was like, okay, all right. I mean, it's a good song. I listened to it. And、then the rest of the album is just as good and is just as entertaining. Now I kind of divide it in two parts because I feel like so there's ten songs, actually thirteen because we got a deluxe edition. Like I think it's only digital with three new songs. I'm gonna get to that too. I'm gonna include the deluxe edition because why not? I mean I bought the songs so might as well and, I, and they're pretty good. They're pretty good too. So even more reason to talk about it. But yeah, I divide this album, this original release, in two parts because I feel like the second part of this album isn't as energetic. You know, the moment highly emotional people starts, it kind of slows down, like rapidly slows down. You're like, okay, like it's a really good song. I mean, it, the song basically explores、uh, what happens when a partner. In a relationship, when someone struggles to be emotional and、uh, to talk about their emotions, which which leads sometimes to a relationship ending because the other one just won't open up. And、uh, I've been there. It sucks.、Um, it really sucks. <laughs> like when you're so emotionally available and the other just isn't, and they put these walls between you. And at some point, you either Cope with it and accept it, even though it's not healthy. Or you just walk away, which is what I did. And it sounds like that's what she did too. It's, these choices are never easy. They never are.、Um, relationships are not easy in general. And、uh, through this album, you really feel it. Like you feel the loss of that relationship, but also.、Um, The ability, I think, that's what makes this album very hopeful. It's like she learned about herself. She keeps moving forward as a person, as an artist, and it really reflects、um, in this album beautifully. And、uh, and yeah, so highly emotional people is slower. It is like it's 
says emotional um but it really illustrates how you know after everything so there's been like six years between wait actually no no what am i saying no not six years when did love and fear come out oh, yeah, 2019 so it's only been like two years between the two albums and the difference in between is actually pretty insane <laughs> It's so hard to compare them because there's nothing to compare because they just it's someone evolving and even though they have things in common um, It's so interesting to me how ancient dreams in modern land is so Reassuring it's like, it's like being in a in a nice little bubble and Someone's taking care of you and you know and I, I guess, you know, self-care, I mean, I, maybe through this album, she's just, you know, healing, taking care of herself. And it really, it really comes out of it this way. And yeah, in this second part, we do have a new America, which is, I, you know, it's weird because if I had to redo the tracklist, I would put new America before highly emotional people. But I mean, it doesn't bother me that much, but it feels like, you know, it definitely is a very different one. Obviously political message in there um, in a lot of these songs which she has done before which was lacking in Love and Fear. I mean, it was there but it wasn't it wasn't 100% there which I think, and I believe in an interview, I recall, I read an interview when this album came out, so I did I remember back then I pre-ordered the album I was like, listen, I'm supporting Marina, she doesn't have like She's not this big artist that can, like, you can just, like, not buy their album, they're fine. I was like, no, I want to show my support because I think she's a tremendous person. And I read an interview, I think she admitted that there was a disconnect for a part of her fan base when Love and Fear came out. And a lot of, um, like, she took a social media break back then, and thank God she did, because, I mean, social media in general is, uh, field of minds, but I feel like when Love and Fear came out, ooh, better not be <laughs> looking at Twitter because there were opinions, like, I don't like to bash people when I don't like something. I like to think about it and be like, why do I not like this? And why does it not resonate with me? Especially because, you know, when you release an album, obviously you want to make this album and you love this album, right? So I can't understand that defending it non-stop must have been incredibly exhausting. But thankfully with this album, uh, I think we can all agree that we all, all really like it. And uh, yeah, so it's very interesting. Like the second part, you know, you got also I love you, but I love me more. Which is, you know, again, it repeats this theme of, well, I need to take care of myself because otherwise there won't be much left of me. And uh, again, you know, very healthy way to cope with things, I believe, because if you give so much to someone and you you lose yourself in a process, then you're gonna come out of there. It's gonna be ugly, really, because relationships are not about giving a hundred percent when the other person doesn't give you anything. It's all about commitment, work, uh, communication. So this album really reflects the struggles as well. And it does so in a way that I feel like can be very painful. You know, I remember, which one was it? Flowers? Yeah, Flowers and Goodbye are, especially Goodbye, I mean, it ends the album in such a bittersweet way. Where it's like, okay, I gotta say goodbye to the person I used to be. And, and just move into this new path and say goodbye also to the person I used to date because we're breaking up and breakups are never easy but also I think flowers reflects that a lot um, which I believe is a hobby of hers to make flowers arrangements so it's fitting it's very fitting uh, I mean in 2020 I got really into plants and stuff like it plants and especially succulents <laughs> help me cope with everything that is happening, I, I get so happy now because of plants. And trust me when I say this, I always thought I would never have a plant in my life. And I grew up with parents obsessed with plants. And I was like, not for me. And 2020, 
even 2019 I happened, I was like, actually, I like plants. <laughs> I can be good with this. So anyway, again, you know, I'm speaking about my own experience because this album makes me reflect on it in such a beautiful and intricate ways. And so yeah, this album, when it came out, you know, I was like, oh, 10 songs is is okay. I mean, they're all about... They're, most of them are over th- three minutes, except uh, I don't know which one. Oh yeah, Venus Flytrap is a bit shorter, but there is it's it's a solid almost forty minute album, which is it's good. It's it's what I like about an album, not too long, not too short. I don't know why the forty minutes, forty five minutes thing works so well with me. Maybe it's my attention span, but I'm really into this. But anyway, as I was saying, so when it came out, you know, we got these 10 songs and um, I listened to it the first time. I remember I was so cautious <laughs> when it came out. I was like, okay, I like three songs. And then I listened to it. I was like, okay, I like all of it. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna, gonna let it sink in, gonna listen to it a little bit more. And yeah, this album is pretty fantastic. I think it's on par. I would say it's closer to Fruit when it comes to the sound, but even so, like, it can be debated. Um, but yeah, it's definitely, like, I never really ranked our albums, but if I had to, it'd be well ranked. I mean, Electro Heart would be number one, I guess Fruit number two, Ancient Dreams in Moreland number three, The Family Jewels number four, and uh, Love and Fear number five. <laughs> it might stay there at the bottom for a very long time. Hopefully, forever. But yeah, now let's talk about the Deluxe Edition because it comes with three new songs, Happy Loner, Pink Convertible, which I believe was leaked ages ago. Like uh, the demo of it. I know it comes with demos. I didn't buy the demos. I I don't need that. So I'm only going to talk about the mastered (laughs) new songs, um, and the third one is Free Woman. Now, Happy Loner, I think she has explained that when she wrote and recorded this song, you know, it's a song for introverts, which I am, so I was like, oh, thank you, (laughs) you shouldn't have made a song about me. Just kidding, but um, I really like this song. I mean, if you're an introvert, this is gonna resonate with you a lot. It really is a lot. I mean, it was written during the pandemic, and you can tell. Because, I mean, during the pandemic, if you're enjoyed, you're kind of thriving. <laughs> it was the perfect... I remember when we were the first lockdown in France, there was no noise, no cars. Oh, the quietness of it all was so satisfying. And obviously, awful things were happening. I'm not, I'm not denying that, but I was happy being at home. <laughs> chilling and playing Animal Crossing New Horizons, which came at the perfect time. But anyway, so yeah, Happy Loner is very good. Again, it's another ballad, so if you're not crazy about ballads, like, that's the thing. If you don't like ballads that much, this album might be a bit of a... You might need to get around it slowly but surely, because it definitely has quite a couple of them. I mean, if we think about it, I mean, I don't think Man Worlds could be considered bad. It's definitely slower, but highly emotional people. Uh, Flowers goodbye. I love you, but I love me. I love me more. Kinda, it's in between. Kind of tries. Oh, Pandora's box. A little too. I mean, she has this tendency to make very soft starts to her songs, and you're like, well, it's gonna be a ballad. And then it kind of evolves, and it grows and grows, and turns out it's uh, it's a bit more than that. But then you got Pink Convertible, which, which personally I don't listen to leaked songs. So, like, I know it was out, but I was like, you know, she didn't want it to release it at the time. And I was like, I don't want to... I want to respect that. I want her to be ready to release officially. And she did. She did. Um... Pink Over was cool. I don't have much to add to it. Like, I'll, I'll be honest, compared to the rest of the album, these new songs I haven't listened to as much. So, 
working my way through it, I definitely, yeah, Happy Owners is the one I'm like, it's pretty good. It's the one that I've listened to the most, but Pink Convertible definitely is growing on me, I'll say that. The first time I listened to it, I was like, mm. I like, I don't know how I feel about it, but it this one reminds me a lot of Electro Heart. It definitely has a bit of a vibe, an Electro Heart vibe to it, which uh, I'm hip to. I'm going to talk about Electro Heart. Like, this is... Remind me in the comments if I never publish a video. <laughs> but I really want to talk about this one because it's... Wow, what an album to talk about. But anyway, the last song is Free Woman. It's funny, this is like... The second song... When did Lady Gaga release her album? 2020? God, I can't remember. Uh, another another Free Woman title song, which is funny. Um, Free Woman's pretty good. I would say it, it feels a bit cheesy to me. Like a bit on the nose when it comes to the message. But at the same time, she's done worse, and, I, and I've liked it, so I feel like really this just needs to grow on me. This is what I need. Um, but yeah, these new songs are good. I don't understand why they were not released when the album came out. I mean, I bought the physical version of it, too. <laughs> um, I would have liked to have them on it. I guess not. Which is okay. Um, it's, it's a good addition, honestly. If you like... The normal edition of Ancient Dreams in Morland, the deluxe edition just for you. It's just, it's a continuation of this sound, of, uh, of what we like about this album. So yeah, go for it. Buy the songs. It's good. So yeah, overall, um, Ancient Dreams in Morland, I kind of want to say it redeemed Marina, but it's, I feel like it's harsh to say that because there was nothing to be redeemed. But it definitely made, it definitely reassured me. I was like, okay, so, okay, alright, this is, I can still be a fan. Like, uh, she still got me, which is good, because honestly, yeah, love and fear really, really worried me. You know, I was like, oh god, am I, you know, I think it's, when you're a fan of someone, like a fan, when you hear about all the cities, you support them. And there's really something that doesn't click with you. There's always this less anxiety that I get. I'm like, oh god, am I not a good fan? What what is happening? Why am I not into this? And turns out, you know, with experience and age, sometimes artists are gonna release things you don't like, and it happens, and that's okay. I mean, I'd rather have a bad album than a bad artist, if that makes sense. You know, because she seems like a great person. And I'm glad she's still true to herself and uh, is evolving in a direction that feels uh, healthy and kind of nice to witness as a fan. But yeah, I, I really beat myself up with love and fear back then. I was like, God, I really, especially when fear came out and, you know, the way it was advertised, like, oh, it's completely different from the first part. And turns out it's not. <laughs> And it was like, the disappointment, like I saw a lot of uh, opinions online that were nuanced about this album, but that were like, yeah, not that great. So I really beat myself up. I was like, no, no, no. And I was like, what is wrong with me? Why am I not loving this album? And the truth is, I, I tried so hard with Love and Fear, and I was like, mm. Like, I'm not saying I would not listen to it, but I'll be honest. It's been almost three years since it came out, and I've probably listened to it like, six times and that was during the year it was released in 2019 so mm, I don't know maybe we'll see in 10 years how I feel about this but I tend to usually feel this way and be settled on it but um yeah all this to say that Ancient Dreams in Morland is fantastic I really really like this album if you were like Ugh, Love and Fear wasn't my thing. I don't really want to listen to her again. Give it a try. Give it a try because I think it's uh, it's really worth it. And um, yeah, I've had I, I still listen to it. Too. It's been like a good year almost. It's it's a really enjoyable album. I like it, and I'm glad you know that she came back. And uh, I believe she's on tour right now. I hope if you guys are going to see her, you are safe, and uh, it's uh, it seems a very fun time. 
Um, I haven't been in concert in so long, it's uh, criminal, but hopefully maybe next year I'll be able... I, I live in, a, in the countryside of France and everyone goes to Paris for concerts, so not easy <laughs> to have access to that, so it's always a bit disappointing, but I mean it makes sense, you know, when it's not a big name, they all go to Paris and I get it, that's where you get the most of your fans, but... It's always disappointing to not be able to go. But anyways, that's just me complaining. Um, so yeah, what did you think of this album? Don't hesitate to let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.